Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the configuring MacVerf Layer 2 Isolated Tenants Learning Byte. All right, so here is our topology. And in this topology, we have four switches and two hosts. And we have spine one, spine two, leaf one, and leaf two. However, we're going to be focusing only on leaf one for the configuration here. And so we won't be touching the other devices for this learning byte. Now, with that being said, I will have additional learning bytes that will cover uh, Mac Verf scenarios. So look out for those. And so, okay, what do we have here? We have host one and host three that are connected to leaf one, and we need to create a Mac Verf. And they're connected on XE004 and XE003. And so with those hosts, we have some host parameters on the left here. Host one uses VLAN V10, which is also using VLAN ID 10. And the IP address is 10.1.1.1 slash 24. And the VNI is 5010. And then host three is in a different VLAN, V20, which uses VLAN ID 20. And IP address of 10.1.2.3 slash 24. And a VNI of 5020. And then we have the IRB interfaces. We have IRB 10, that's going to be the virtual gateway, and it's going to use address 10.1.1.254 for the virtual gateway. And IRB 20, or dot 20, is going to use 10.1.2.254 for the virtual gateway. And that is going to be in a T5 VRF. So it's a Type 5 VRF. And so that part is what we want to focus on here. Uh, if you've seen my other learning bytes, it does kind of cover how to configure MacVerfs. But now we need to connect it into a T5 VRF as well. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this going. All right, so here is the CLI. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the routing instance configuration. And let's configure the MacVerf first. Set the instance type, and this is going to be MacVerf, of course. And then protocols, eVPN. Encapsulation, VXLAN, extended VNI list. We're just going to set that to all. We could just set it to 5010, but I'm being lazy right now. So I'll just use the keyword all. The VTEP source interface, we're going to use the loopback interface on this device. And then we have to set the service type. And we're going to use uh, VLAN aware for the service type with MacVerf. And then the interface, this is going to connect into host one. So we need to use the interface XE004. And then the route distinguisher is going to be 192.168.100.11. We're basing it off of the loopback address of leaf1. We're going to say colon 10, since this is VLAN V10. And then we're going to set the route target. We're going to say target colon 65,000 colon 10. And the 10, of course, is because it's VLAN 10. Then we have to set the VLANs uh, V10. Uh, set the VLAN ID to 10, and then the L3 interface is going to be IRB.10. And notice how we didn't put the IRB interface in this routing instance, but we are referencing the L3 interface here in the MacVerf. That is very important. And then we're going to say VXLAN, VNI, 5010. And that should be the configuration for that routing instance. And we do get a little or a few warnings because we need to configure the interfaces. And so let's do that now. So that is the XE004 interface, and then let's set the IRB interface. And we just set the uh, IRB interface to that virtual uh, gateway address. And then with that, I do also want to uh, add the accept data command. So virtual gateway accept data. And so we're good there with that routing instance. So let's go ahead and create the next routing instance. Uh, we'll call this one V20 because it's using VLAN uh, V20 with VLAN ID 20. And so again, set the instance type to Mac Verf. Then we set the protocol, EVPN, encapsulation VXLAN, extended VLAN ID list. We're just gonna be lazy and say all. Set the VTEP source interface to the loopback. And then set the service type to VLAN aware. And set the interface 
XE003. We'll need to configure that later, of course. And then route distinguisher. We're going to set that to 182.168.11 or 100.11, colon 20. Again, basing it off the loopback address. Set VRF target. And say target colon 65000, 65,000 that is, colon 20. And then we need to configure the VLAN, V20, VLAN ID 20, L3 interface, RV.20, and VXLAN VNI, uh, it's gonna be 5020. And so remember, we're setting the L3 interface here. So this VLAN can use this L3 interface, but we're not adding the L3 interface, uh, that is that IRB interface to this routing instance. And then let's set the interfaces. And so that's the XE3 interface. There's 20, we're going to see virtual gateway accept data, and then family INET address. So we've configured the two MACverse, but now we need to configure the T5 routing instance, and that's gonna be a regular uh, VRF routing instance. So let's go ahead and start that. We'll just call this T5. Of course, you can call it whatever you want. If I could type here, there we go, VRF. And then we need to set the eVPN parameters, and we're gonna set the IP prefix routes. And we're gonna say advertise direct next hop. And then the encapsulation is going to be VXLAN and VNI. Now this has to be something different than the current VNIs we're using because what we'll do later and uh, in a different learning byte is we'll connect it to another T5 routing instance on a different leaf. And But we won't be doing that in this learning byte. Just keep that in mind. So look out for that other learning byte. We'll just say 1100. And then... That's good there, but we need to export some routes. And so the other devices are aware, the other leaves in the network that we would be connected to a T5, that we would want to export these routes. And so I'll configure that here, even though we won't be connecting it to another T5 routing instance on a different switch. And so what we do there is just set export and then specify the export policy. Call this T5 export. And then we need to configure that policy. And what do we want to export here? This is, this is the part you have to think. So we would want to export something like a, the routes associated with the IRB interfaces. And so what we would do here is say term one from route filter 10.1.1.0 slash 24. Specify exact. 10.1.2.0 for exact and accept it. And so that is the configuration for the eVPN protocol. And then we need to set interface IRB.10, put those IRB interfaces in here. And then we need to configure a route target as well. Now this is going to be different from the route targets we used in the other instances. So VRF target, say target colon 123 colon 1, just something that will allow it to connect to other T5 instances in the data center. And then it's always useful to do the set VRF table label. And I don't think that's absolutely necessary though. And so that is the configuration for the T5 routing instance. So let's go ahead and commit that. And I did forget to configure the route distinguisher. That is important. And so uh, let's do that now. And this, of course, just needs to be unique. So I'm going to say 182.168.100.11, base it off of the loopback address, and colon 5, just so it represents a type 5 route. And then we can commit that. And that is the configuration for configuring L2 isolated tenants with MacVerf. So this does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrate how to configure layer 2 isolated tenants with MacVerf in a data center. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, 
the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.